Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for staying with us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Osteoporosis is a health condition that weakens bones, making them fragile and more likely to break. It develops slowly over several years and is often only diagnosed when a fall or sudden impact causes a bone to break. According to the International Osteoporosis Foundation, globally, the condition causes more than 8.9 million fractures every year, 1.66 million at the hip. Hip fractures are projected to quadruple by 2050 as people live to be older. My guest is a consultant, trauma and orthopedic surgeon at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja. He is also a senior lecturer at the College of Medicine. You're welcome to the show, Dr. Ladipo Adewole. Thank you very much. So it looks like it's a fall or sudden impact that heralds the fact that somebody has osteoporosis. But by that time, the person is probably 50. Is there no other symptom? Well, usually what you are correct. What usually brings the attention of um, the medical practitioner to that diagnosis is the fact that the the trauma is often trivial. It's not an impact that you would expect to cause a break in the bone. Um, secondly, there may be some unexplained bone pains, low back pain, um, because uh, when the bones are weak like that, uh, less dense, the bones can crack. And those little cracks can cause pain. Why are the bones less dense? What's happening? Well, um, first of all, as we, as we grow up, between the ages of 20 and 30, the body builds um, bone mass. And at the age of 30, that's where the peak is. Okay. But from the age of 30, the bones, the, the rate at which there's, there's bone building and then there's bone destruction. So the rate of bone building is higher between 20 and 30. It's higher than bone breakdown. bone breakdown. But after 30, bone breakdown starts to come up because it's dynamic. So should we say that everybody will eventually yes. have osteoporosis? Yes. So there are two types of osteoporosis. There's one that is related to hormones and one that is related to age. Okay. The ones that are related to hormones, particularly estrogen in women after menopause, that comes earlier. Oh, so menopause has something to do menopause with it. Menopause is definitely a risk factor. Um, but for men, testosterone. But men kept, get, tend to have testosterone till about 70. So they um, have the hormonal uh, variety later. But everybody will have um, age-related osteoporosis. Okay, so does that mean that if there's no impact or fall, there will be no breakage? No. Um, that's why I said it's, it tends to be a trivial injury. And as I told you, there can be a, a crack is a breakage. But what you are talking about is a complete fracture that requires treatment with um, a cast or a fixation or something. No. So usually the weaker the bone, the more easy it is for it to break because it's more fragile. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tell us about why hip fractures are so important. Well, um, in osteoporosis, there are three areas that where fractures commonly occur. Hip, the spine, and then the forearm, particularly around the wrists. If the hip is broken, particularly near the joints, where we call the neck, then it doesn't heal. It doesn't heal? It doesn't heal because the blood supply in that area is so poor that there isn't enough blood supply to take nutrients to the head of the, of the femur bone. Is it, the, is it age that causes the poor blood supply? It's, it's the location of the head of the femur. In children, they have a lot more blood sources, but in, in adults, the blood supply comes only from one end. So if the bone is broken, then the blood 
does not cross the area where the bone is broken and then the end, the head, doesn't have blood supply and then dies. Okay. So the fracture will not heal. So if there's a neck or femur fracture, for the patient to walk again, the patient needs a hip replacement. But I've heard talk about uh, mortality from a hip fracture. How does, you know, how, how, okay. what's the connection here? Well, it's, uh, it's coincidental, really. Um, if in, first of all, the person who has a hip fracture is elderly, uh, it's not moving around a lot, so there are complications from just lying in bed, things like blood clots okay. um, can cause death. So it could um, just be a secondary problem. Yes, and then there will be co what we call comorbidities, especially maybe hypertensive, diabetic, and all that, in addition to that. So it's not really the fracture that kills. It's just that patient that has that fracture usually has other factors that can cause death. Okay, so people talk about a characteristic stoop, especially in women. Is that caused by a breakage of the vertebral bone, you know, the okay, punching yes, over yes, yes. or something else? Yes. That's why people say when you grow older, you, you become shorter. shorter. It's because the backbone, the spine, bends forward and it usually bends forward because of these micro fractures I told you about, the cracks in the bones. So when the bones heal, they heal with the bones bent forward a bit. So that's what causes the hunch. So it's usually fractures, so, micro So fractures. let's say you, you don't want somebody to fracture by the time they are 50 or 60. Can you actually find out if a person is you know, getting close to the age where they will have osteoporosis. And let me put it this way. Let's say somebody's going to have osteoporosis at 50. Is there something you can do to make it come at maybe 60, 70, or never? Well, the, the key to prevention is first to make, to, to know the, the risk factors, to identify those who are likely to, to get, to get it, it faster yes. because the conclusion we've come to is that Everybody if you live long it. enough you're going to get it yes. anyway so with women in particular after menopause they need to see a doctor to be screened for okay. osteoporosis after menopause yes not before no generally once the um, there's still a lot of estrogen around that is a major sex hormone that causes buildup of bone the other condition... I'm beginning to really like this hormone. It causes a lot of protection. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, you know, the other thing is some patients are on steroid, steroids uh, for... Medication. Medication for different ailments. Um, maybe some very, very chronic uh, conditions um, that require steroids. Sometimes it's pain. Yes. Well, not, not so much pain. It's more for those uh, chronic rheumatoid conditions. And the uh, steroids are notorious for causing um, osteoporosis. Okay. Uh, so if, if you are female, you're postmenopausal, or you've been on steroids for a long time, maybe for cancer, maybe um, even uh, males who are taking some medication to reduce the testosterone, males with prostate cancer and things like that. Okay, hang on a minute. This treatment to reduce testosterone yes. could be because of prostate cancer. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> Usually that is what it is for. Okay. So if such people who are on that kind of medication are more likely to um, have osteoporosis. Where then is the middle ground? So, well... What, once you have that, uh, those predisposing conditions, then you, you go in and see a doctor, and there's a, there's a test called the, the bone mineral density test, densitometry. Um, it's a specialized x-ray kind of test that measures the bone density. Okay. And the density is, you know, whether it, the interpretation of that test would depend on the sex, the age, you know, the, and, the, and the race. 
because okay. osteoporosis is commoner in whites and Asians than, than in Africans. Well, that's what the literature says. Um, although life expectancy here is lower. It's lower. So that may be a factor. So people don't get to be old enough sometimes yeah. to actually experience yes. the osteoporosis. Yes, but we did a preliminary study at Ikeja and we checked the bone density of women, uh, postmenopausal women, and compared them to the uh, bone density of young ladies between 23 and 30. And our conclusion, one of our conclusions was that there was a suggestion that bones in at least black Nigerian women that we studied may actually be denser than their counterparts. Their uh, Caucasian counterparts. Yes. We don't know what the factors are, whether it's diet or anything like that. We don't know. Can't a young woman take something like supplements to at least you know, improve the outlook for, for okay. life in the future. Okay. Um, you know, I was telling you that there's a peak bone density at the age of 30. 30. So depending on how dense your bones are at that age, then let's just say that that's your bone bank. Okay. And you're going to be losing bone a little at a while. I mean, a little at a time. From that From age. that age. Obviously, if you start out with a large bank account, before you finish spending the money, it will take a long time. We want so to put a deposit <laughs> into this account. <laughs> but, uh, so, if, if, you, are, if you, are, you, are, you have big bones, as they say, you are less likely to um, have osteoporosis. Okay. And that's why we see it more in the, the typical osteoporotic patient is a woman, and she's a very, very slim build um, so obviously she started out with a low bank account, bone bank account and you know so it's easier for her to get to the osteoporotic uh, point the other thing is diet um, calcium and vitamin d are very important for bone health and common dietary sources are um, green leafy vegetables and milk and milk products I mean, cheese is a delicacy here, or at least milk, um, milk and green leafy. It's more and then affordable, yeah. Some nuts, uh, like almond nuts, have a high calcium. Vitamin D, you find in uh, a lot of these uh, oily fish. Um, and then, of course, you can find calcium in, in sardines as well. Okay. Then the supplements. So, uh, essentially, those are the dietary sources, but obviously, we're talking about supplements with vitamin D and calcium. Yes. But there's a problem with calcium. If you take too much calcium, it can cause other problems like kidney stones. And there's a suggestion that it may actually cause some heart disease. I don't know if Can anybody body really take too much? Yes. So that's why it's prescribed that nobody should take more than 2,000 uh, milligrams of calcium a day. Well, you know, these things are sold commonly over the counter and people just buy. Yes. I don't even know what strength they are sold in. Uh, usually those, um, the common ones, take into consideration all these figures I'm talking about. Okay. And they have them in the, in the, in the right uh, proportions. So if a woman eats her normal leafy diet yes. and takes maybe one tablet a day, she's good well, to go. I wouldn't even prescribe, I would say until there is a need. Okay. I think diet is, is more important. The let's, other thing is exercise. Okay. Exercise Let, let's is quickly key. take a break before we continue. We're going on a break right now. Stay with us for the rest of the show after this. Welcome back. If you have questions, call 0805 Four six eight three five one four. That's zero eight zero five four six eight three five one four. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. Now you've already said that the indication for a woman to go and check herself is probably after menopause. Yes. How about a man? When does a man go and and have a look at himself? Usually, men don't develop age-related. Men, um, osteoporosis until 70. Wow, However, that is quite a gap. Yes. However, if they're, as I said, if they're on medications like 
those steroids I spoke about or medicines to treat, um, to reduce testosterone as part of the treatment for um, prostate cancer, then they need to check earlier. Okay, so since it looks like nobody comes to the hospital and there's no routine check for this kind of thing, then there must be some other precautions people uh, can take. You've mentioned diet. You said something about exercise. What kind of exercise are we talking about? Well, exercise has to be age appropriate. But the, what we call the weight-bearing exercise. Weight that bearing. Means Before you go into that fully, let's take David. David is calling from Abuja. Hello, David. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your question? Okay, please. Um, I heard the doctor talking about um, building your bone, um, something at the age of 30. Now, is there, is there um, a test we can run at 30 to know our bone density account so that we don't let it fall below measure? And then secondly, I do a lot of weight in the gym. Now, are there exercises we can do, we are doing wrongly, that can make this osteoporosis come earlier than it should come? Okay. Thank you very much, David. I think that's similar to what I asked you. Yes. Filling this bank account. Yes. <laughs> uh, as I said, there are certain things you cannot, mod you cannot modify. You can't modify your age. You can't modify your sex. You cannot modify your race. Your race. Or even your body build or your genetics. Because we also know that if first degree relatives have osteoporosis, you are likely oh, to Oh, there's have a hereditary it. factor there. Yes. But lifestyle can be modified. Smoking and excessive drinking of alcohol affects the absorption of calcium in the stomach. More commonly these days, to treat um, weight, for weight loss, there are surgical ways for managing weight loss now, or like uh, stapling the stomach to make it smaller. That way, whatever nutrients you are eating, there's less surface area for the for nutrients absorption. to be absorbed. So exercise is also part of the lifestyle modifications. So, and you were talking about weight-bearing Yes, exercise. weight-bearing exercises, walking and things like that. And then a little bit of walking upper body. Walking is weight-bearing? Yes, because you are walking. I thought you need to carry, you know, no, dumbbells. No, no, no. Your, 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 your body is carrying your weight. The other thing is weight, um, body weight. It's, it's not such a good idea to be underweight. So the young ladies who want to be as thin Size as zero. possible, it's not, <laughs> it, may, it, may pay, it may not pay, but it may, it may be a problem later in life. And of course, on the other hand, too, obesity is not, it's not a good idea. So, you know, uh, an average body weight is fine. Okay, so um, is it only steroids that thin the bones out? Uh, there are some other medications, like some medications for um, seizures, um, some medications for breast cancer, and some other now, cancers. Those cannot be helped. They cannot be helped. Tony is calling us from Ikorodu. Let's take his call. Hello, Tony. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Doc. Yeah, sorry. I, it's like I had this problem some time ago. I had this location on my... Could you speak a bit louder? And, uh, my wrist. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, this is good. Uh, so I said, it's like I had this problem some time ago. I had a, 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 a dislocation on my spinal cord and uh, my wrist some time ago. And this was the name they told me in the hospital, osteoporosis. Can it lead to infertility? Oh, thank you very much. And Tony is a lady. Okay. Um, does it lead to infertility? Not to the best of my knowledge, no. Unless there's another problem, no. But I have another question. When somebody has a breakage like that, you know, having in mind that there could be another breakage, how do you manage that? Yes, there are medications that are used to treat osteoporosis. And one one group oh. of the medications reduces the rate at which bones break down. You know, at the beginning Aha, of the this program... This is what I've been looking for. Yes. <laughs> at the beginning of the program, I told you that there's a delicate balance between bone building and bone breakdown. Yes. And the older you get, the, the less the building and the more the breakdown. The breakdown. So there are some medications, uh, you know, uh, 
basalt they, they are called build, oh uh, you don't have to tell us okay but anyway. it looks as if you know you're being really really careful yes. about when to administer treatment yes because those medications have side effects okay so you don't want to treat you don't want to treat unnecessarily because you have to take the burden with the benefits so you you have to weigh them if you are going to give a drug that has quite severe side effects, then it might it had better be worth it. Yes. So let's we don't. quickly take Elizabeth from Enugu. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Are you there? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you speak a bit louder? Okay. Can you hear me? Can a little hear me? more, please. Hello. Yes, that's great. Okay. What's your question? My question is this: Please, how does um, osteoporosis is it related to arthritis? Oh, okay. How does Good it relate one. to arthritis? And then for someone that um, is suffering from arthritis, how does how does he or she go by? All right. Thank this? you very much, Elizabeth. That's. Okay. Someone is already arthritic. Does osteoporosis come faster because of that? If, um, first of all, if you have arthritis and it causes you to reduce your movement around, mm -hmm. you're more sedentary and things like that because of pain, then that would make osteoporosis uh, come, come faster, quicker. Because there's what we call disuse osteoporosis. Osteoporosis as a result of not using your limbs. the limbs. So that can cause that. However, we also know that osteoporosis itself um, can predispose to arthritis of the knees because of the, of the knees and the hips because of these fractures I was talking about. So they about. are related. They are related, yes. It, so the major thing now, because we're looking at something that is more or less inevitable it can be slowed down but it's inevitable what kind of uh, modifications can one make to your house to reduce the chance of a fall yes um, first of all elderly people um, who use like a bathtub okay um, it's not such a good idea because it's slippery so you have to put um, anti-slip mats in the bath and around the area so you don't sleep shower is better especially if you can you can actually sit down on a plastic um seat and a chair or something and, and wash stool up. and wash up um accesses to the home you know handrails on all stairs not on one side on both sides that need to be held. so they steady themselves yes. as they go up or come down yes and then um, on stairs, there's some anti-slip material that can be put on the stairs that make it more difficult to slip when going upstairs. And if you can afford it, you can move out of your big house and move into a bungalow. So that you don't have to <laughs> so climb, any, have stairs to climb any stairs after <laughs> all. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming to the show. That has been so refreshing. And thank you so much for being with us. And letting us share our time with you. More thanks to David, to Tony and Elizabeth and everybody else watching. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Have a wonderful day.